It's so silly, but it's true. Well, I started, I moved to Italy when I was 19 and I just went really to learn the language, which I did pretty quickly because you can learn a language when you're young. And um, I started modeling there a bit and um, not seriously or anything. And I got back to New York and I really didn't do anything fashion oriented. I worked in an art gallery, I went back to college. And then I was actually working for a photographer and um, I said, oh, maybe I'll try fashion photography. And one day my sister said to me, you know, you take the worst pictures, but you get the best clothes. Yeah. So one thing led to another, and I had designed, I started designing clothing, and I had a little shop in Soho. I was the first boutique in Soho on West Broadway in 1979. And that didn't work out, and one thing led to another, So, and I became a fashion stylist, which I didn't even know was a job, you know. And I did that for you know, many years I worked at Harper's Bazaar, and I've been actually a freelance stylist since, I guess since 1983 or 84, I worked at, you know, for different people, and I've always freelanced. The only real job I had was at Harper's Bazaar, I was an editor there for a year, and I've been freelancing ever since, and being around supermodels and everybody, everybody. Um, the oldies and goodies and the new ones. I work with Adriana Lima and I work with Patricia Casta. I work with I work with all I do a lot of Victoria's Secret. So I work with all the supermodels for that. And I've worked with movie stores and Madonna, everybody. I've worked with almost every share. Well, um, I was in Europe with my best friend who was pregnant and she's very health foody. And she said, let's go to the health food store and buy something for my stomach. Let's put all this stuff together and make it. I said, okay. So we went and we bought all these butters and creams and avocado butter. And, her, and we got home and we were mixing it literally in a spaghetti pot. And her husband came home and he said, I don't know what you two are doing, but you got to throw it out. This, you, I can smell it from the parking lot. It's horrible. You know, it wasn't even fragrant. It was disgusting. So you didn't even know what oils to put in. You just grabbed yeah, we just and, yeah. We thought whatever might work. Yeah. And I got back to New York and I thought, wait a minute, I, I think I can really make something nice here. And I went to the health food store in New York and I bought all the oils that I liked. Because I always loved oils and I used to buy them in little stores or wherever I traveled. And I bought them as much as for the mystery of it, as for the bottle and the packaging. And I knew that some were good for this and some were good for that. So I just bought 11 oils. It turned out to be 11. I didn't plan on it. Could have been 15, it could have been two, but it was 11. And I started making it and bringing it, to, and I bought little bottles online, and I started bringing this concoction to work. And I gave it to all the models and the makeup artists and everything, and they said, wow, this is really cool, we really like this. And simultaneously, my nephew um, came into town, and he walked into my apartment, and he said, what are you, because I had these vats of oil and bottles, and well, not vats, because I didn't buy that much. I'd buy a little bit at a time. I said, what are you doing? I said, oh, I make this oil. And he said, well, how much do you charge? And anyway, so um, my nephew said, oh, no, no, what are you doing? I said, I'm making this oil. He said, well, you, how much do you sell it for and what's the formula? I said, well, I give it away. He said, well, that's stupid. And I said, I don't have a formula. I just know how to make it. It's like if you're a good cook, I guess you know the recipe by eye or smell or sight. So he went online and he ordered 11 beakers because I had 11 oils. And I made it same way five times by eye and then this and it was perfect every time and the sixth time instead of pouring it all into the same coffee cup I made it in a coffee mug I poured it into each beaker that he labeled by oil and then he marked the line of the amount per oil and that's the same formula I know it's so silly but it's true But no, I don't believe in anything other than what makes you comfortable. I mean, I wouldn't say, oh, you're crazy to do 12 things if that's what it's makes you. Personal. Yeah, I mean, personal. I rather would not. But I've never fought my age. You know, I've had gray hair since I was 35. I never even thought about dying it. Um, I, I would do any kind of procedure. I do this thing called triad. Um, 
Dr. Dr. Colbert. It's a three-part thing, and it's it's heat, and it's I don't know if it's laser. I don't know what it is, but it's this thing you can get like every other week. It's too expensive, so I try to get it once a month, and it just stimulates everything in your face. And Dr. Colbert does it. It's collagen. It's wonderful. I mean, and uh, someone asked me if I, you know, how do you feel about this and that. I said, fine, whatever you want to do, if it's in moderation, and you don't look, you know, end up looking distorted, which a lot of people do, then whatever makes you feel good, you know, uh, you know. But chasing youth is never going to happen. Because that's the thing about it all. I think everyone looks in the mirror and sees something else. Everybody. Or you look at a picture of yourself and you go, oh. Because I'll look at pictures and go, when did my nose get so big? I mean, I used to have the most beautiful little nose, and it's not beautiful or little anymore. How did that happen? Yeah. You know, and you just go, ooh, how did I change so much? Or, but if you start worrying about it, I think you're screwed. I mean, but it is nice to be in shape and take the best care of yourself. But when we were growing up, you know, I never used anything on my face till I was probably about 45. We used soap and water. Yeah. They didn't have creams and potions and, I mean, for 20 years I've been using stuff, but not before that. Yeah. Nothing. We didn't have any, I mean, maybe we used Nivea on our hands or baby oil on our face after the beach, or, but we never had products. I don't ever remember having a body oil or a body cream or a, nothing. We didn't use anything. And we also sat in the sun like maniacs. I mean, I was, you know... With the baby, with the baby oil and iodine, sun reflectors. Yeah. yeah, I was so tan, and I loved it. I have to say, what are the? If someone gave told me the funniest thing, she said, "Oh, you were tanorexic, right?" I said, "Totally. I was so dark, and I loved it, but I really ruined my skin. I mean, I, I, I can't say I regret it because I had such a great time, and I grew up near the beach, so I regret it sort of, but not really, because it was some of the best times of my life at the beach. I'm like in a white long." you know, Indian shirt with like so much sunblock on, I look like a, a kabuki dancer. I'm completely white. I just, I can't do it anymore. Well, you look amazing. Thank you. So do you. You're such a gorgeous. I want to have about 10 products, um, like a small line, and I want to do accessories for it, like travel bags. And I have a, some really, really good ideas about how I want to keep it small but chic and you know not precious but you know already in a way we are we're making a facial powder and a scrub and we actually had the facial powder done one of the key ingredients came from japan and then with the earthquake the whole thing got put on hold. but i do have a facial scrub we're doing a body scrub a candle um how many is that nine what was my other thing I can't remember. A candle. Yeah. 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 So oh, you know, it makes me laugh that people say I'm so stylish. Because I never, you know... You don't think about it? No, I want to look nice. I do think about it. How are you? Uh, <laughs> I know! And you're wonderful. Thank you, honey. A regular. She's 90 years old. Yeah, she's the best. Um, anyway, it's not something I think about, like, oh, I'm going to go out and buy that new Prada. Uh, because I've never really had the money to buy all that. And even if I did, I wouldn't want to buy something that everybody else had. You know, and I went through a vintage clothing period because then nobody had it. And now I just buy what I like that I feel is, um, you know, that I can afford. And... You know, I guess it's quirky, you know, I don't, but I don't really, you know, it's funny because I have a friend that I have known since my whole life and one day she, I hadn't seen her for about 25 years and she said, oh, what do you do for a living? What are you doing? I said, oh, I'm in the fashion business. She said, of course you are. I said, what do you mean? She said, well, in fourth grade you had the best clothes. <laughs> But it wasn't like anything I really thought about, although my mother was very glamorous. Um, but I, I don't remember clothes being a big part of my life at all. Yeah. You obviously have an eye and you know how to cook it. Yeah, yeah, but you know, we all make mistakes. I mean, sometimes I look at pictures of myself and I think, actually, I was looking at pictures of a wedding I went to and when I was 23, and I was wearing like a white Mexican wedding dress to my friend's wedding. And I thought, where did I ever get that dress? But um, no, I just like beautiful things, whether it's clothing or... It's just in Prague. 
working on a photo shoot for Victoria's Secret. And one day I went into this antique shop and I bought this vintage chic costume, which was like three skirts, this crazy blouse, this little vest, a headpiece, a scarf. And I bought it just because it was so beautiful and I'm wearing it in one of the pictures. I mean, not the whole outfit, but you can see the blouse and how beautiful it is, you know. So it's just whatever, yeah, whatever's out there. This, you know, I'm happy to, and I try to wear stuff that not everybody else wears, but you know, certain things you just like because they're great and that's why everybody wears them. No, I'm working. It always happens every year when the shows happen is when all the photo shoots come at the same time. So I'm not a big fashion show girl. lies about anything, she doesn't hide her secrets. I mean, she's been so, she actually, the first time she got my oil, she sent me flowers. I was shocked. I mean, it was the sweetest, and I love her anyway. I think she's a great actress, and everything she does is, seems to be from her heart, and that she really loves. That's the monkey. Oh, it's a poodle. Yeah. Oh. And it's a girl or boy? It's a little boy. What's his name? Winky. Winky. That's precious. That's oh, I'm here every single day. I mean, winter, summer. And I usually meet, um, do you know Dr. Colbert, his line? Have you I've read about it? it? He's one of my best friends. He's my dermatologist. So we meet here every, I'm surprised he's not here. Yeah. We're usually here every single day for two hours when we don't have to work. We yeah. sit here and talk. Yeah, exactly. Do you have any spinach from yesterday? Yeah, I'm very teeth conscious, tooth conscious. Thank you so much for sitting My pleasure. If I look awful, just put pixels in front of my face. Wouldn't that be great? Pixelated. Thank you. Thank you.